Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how we can use the integral test to tell if series converge or diverge. So in my opinion, and many people's opinion, the integral test is the worst of the 10 tests we have because who wants to do a complicated integral in the middle of a series problem? On top of that, it's always gonna be an improper integral. So if you forget how to do those, make sure you check out my video on improper integrals first. So here's what the integral test says. We start with some series, a sub n, and the starting point and the ending point don't really matter. But I'll just make something up for the sake of it, n equals zero to infinity. So in order to use the integral test, we first need to prove that this function a sub n is continuous, positive, and decreasing. In other words, if I were to graph this function from zero to infinity specifically, the graph needs to be continuous, positive, and decreasing. So something that looks like this. There's a couple ways you can prove this. Number one, you can graph it if you're allowed a graphing calculator or if you just know what the graph looks like. Two, you can use calculus one methods, specifically taking the first derivative f prime of x, finding the critical points and plotting the points on a number line to see whether you're increasing or decreasing. Or the third way, and this is my personal favorite way, you just say it's continuous, positive, and decreasing. And most of the time, your teacher will just let you get away with it. And you don't even really need any work to prove it a lot of the time, unless your teacher is a real stickler with that, then you have to. But assuming you meet these three criteria first, which you need to have memorized, then that means we can do the integral test, which is to say, turn your series a sub n into f of x, which sounds hard, but it's really not, because if your series is like one over n or something, then you just turn it into one over x. Or if I had n over n squared plus three n, you would turn that into x over x squared plus three x. In other words, I'm just turning all of my n's into x's, not that bad. And then I just take the integral of this function from the lower bound, which was zero, if you remember, in my example here, zero to the upper bound, infinity, and then just take the integral of your function f of x dx, and again, this is an improper integral, which means the first step I gotta do is limit as some variable t, I like to use, goes to infinity, integral of zero to t f of x dx, and then we solve this integral. So there's two times we wanna use the integral test. Number one, the question tells us use the integral test. That's like a dead giveaway. And two, I like to use the integral test personally whenever I have like a natural log in my series. Like for instance, if I have the series n equals two to infinity of one over n natural log of n, then I like to use integral test here personally because there's not a lot of other good tests that deal with natural log. So that's just my preference. But now let's look at a couple questions of the integral test in action. First, the series from n equals one to infinity of n over n squared plus one. So before I even use the integral test for this problem, I need to prove that it's continuous, positive, and decreasing. And to do that, I'm just gonna show you a graph of what this function looks like. This graph happens to look like this. And so as you can see, for a lot of the graph, it is not positive or decreasing, but I guess it's continuous. But the good news is, if I look at my bounds, I only need to be continuous, positive, and decreasing from one to infinity. And as it just so happens, this point right here is one, and everything after one is positive, continuous, and decreasing. So we pass all three checks, and we are then able to use the integral test, which means I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from one to infinity of x over x squared plus one dx. Or I gotta do an improper integral, so really limit t goes to infinity of one to t x over x squared plus one dx. This integral is pretty easy. It is a u substitution where u equals x squared plus one, du equals two x dx, and dx equals du divided by two x which means we get limit as t goes to infinity. This two is gonna go out in front as a one half integral from one to t of x over u times 
du over x, the x's cancel. I get one half integral, one to t, one over u du, and hopefully you know this integral, this is the natural log of the absolute value of u. Or plugging back in for my u substitution, x squared plus one, it's limit, t goes to infinity, of the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus one evaluated from t to one. So the first thing I gotta do is plug in infinity and then subtract one. This will basically be the natural log of t squared plus one or the natural log of infinity squared plus one, which will be just the natural log of infinity, which is infinity. And then all of this minus natural log of one squared plus one. I don't need absolute values technically because that's gonna be positive here anyway, but it's gonna be natural log of two now, infinity minus the natural log of two is just gonna be infinity. And as soon as I get the result infinity, we say diverge. That's the conclusion of the integral test. You would say diverges by the integral test and we're done. If you got an answer that's not infinity, that's when we say converges. And by the way, if you got an answer like five, that does not mean the sum is five. I know we've talked about sums with telescoping series and geometric series. But if you get an answer of five with the integral test, that is not the sum. That's just some number that you're gonna to use to prove that it converges. And that's all you would write, converges. So that's it for that one. Let's do another one. Let's say I have the series from n equals one to infinity of e to the negative n. So first we need to prove that this function is continuous, positive, and decreasing. And again, to prove this, I'm going to show you the graph. The graph happens to look like this. And we can see it's definitely continuous positive and decreasing. So it's gonna be fine to use the integral test here. Check, check, check. So why don't you try doing the integral test on your own and when you wanna see the solution, just unpause the video. Okay, so here it goes. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this as the integral from one to infinity of e to the negative x dx I will also turn this into an improper integral by putting the limit from one to t, e to the negative x dx. This will be a u substitution for my negative x exponent, u equals negative x, du equals negative dx, and therefore dx equals negative du. That negative sign just goes in front of the integral, so I really have this now. Limit as t goes to infinity of negative integral one to t, of e to the u du. And the reason why this is so nice is because I do know this integral. So first the negative sign carries over. Integral of e to the u is e to the u. And then I just plug in my u, which was negative x. So it's negative e to the negative x. And this still needs to be evaluated from t to one. So first when I plug in t, negative e to the negative t minus negative e to the negative one, and this double negative will become plus. So in other words, it's kind of like we have negative e to the negative infinity plus e to the negative one. Now this does look like infinity because infinity is in the exponent. But before I say that, you need to remember that a negative exponent really means it's in the denominator and it's positive. In other words, what I'm trying to say here, this can be rewritten as negative one over e to the positive infinity plus one over e. We need to know that this property holds. And that's so important because e to the infinity is infinity like this, and anything divided by infinity is just zero, meaning the final answer is zero plus one over e, so you get one over e. And this number itself isn't important, but just the fact that you got some number means that this integral is going to converge by the integral test. And that's everything I have to say about the integral test. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.